Welcome, guys, to the third episode of Des Amours Design. My name is Elizabeth, and you can find me on Facebook, Instagram, and Pinterest as Des Amours Design. We're just going to jump right into this episode because I have a lot to show you. The first thing we're going to do is talk about yarn life. Remember, yarn life is where I discuss anything that's in your new yarn that's in my um, yarn stack. My friend Jennifer, Jennifer and I met... Um, well, it's been 10 years. Yeah. No, it's about, it's nine years. Um, Jennifer and I met on my first ship in the Navy. Uh, she was, uh, we met, um, we're in the same department and we became friends. We've been friends since, honestly, she is my longest friend in the Navy and she learned to crochet well, I taught her mother to crochet a little bit. She she could only do a couple of um, little uh, chains. Jesus, I'm acting like I don't know how to crochet. She can only do chains. And then now I think she's at the step now where she can do a dishcloth. But that's been, what, five years when I have taught her mother to crochet. And Jennifer taught to um, learn to crochet as well. And she was actually, she had her own business for a while where she was selling crochet beanie, beanies, like where she was doing different um, cartoon characters, different, like she she did one of um, Chewbacca. That was so, was it Chewbacca? The one that makes the weird noise. I don't know the name, but she did one of that one with the, all the hair and stuff. That was Star Wars, which I don't want the Star Wars. I don't know. I don't watch Star Wars. So she did one of that. That was very popular and I really, really liked it. Um, but she was, um, she's moving back here to Norfolk and cause she moved, uh, to Washington state. I'm acting like I forgot. She moved to Washington state a couple of years ago with her husband who is in the Navy. So now they're moving back East to be closer to their family and to be in this area again, which I'm very excited about having my friend back being close to me. Um, but anyways, all this little story is like, she sent me some of the yarn from her stash that she was trying to downsize in the process of moving. And I'm going to show, share them with you. So the first one is this beautiful one. Like I love the blue, the green and some mint colors in it. Can you see that? I really like this one. This one is wonderfully would be eco hand dyed it's a hand dyed yarn hand dyed yarn it's fingering fingering weight it's usa merino it's 450 yards 100 gram i haven't really worked with fingering weight so i don't know what i'll make with it if you guys have any ideas of what i could make with this one leave them in the comment below and I don't know. We can see what I create with it. The next one she sent me is this one. I don't know if you can see the colors. It's very like greenish, bluish. It's more like, um, I don't know. Do you guys follow uh, Kalisha? That's her name, but on YouTube, I think she is Nadaritini. Nad I'll I'll write the name there because I'm feeling I'm butchering it. But she does this um, Pisces season cow every year. And she always, like, I remember watching her episode where she's always talking about, like, she wants to use more uh, blues and greens and stuff like that for that. So the minute I saw this, I'm like, oh, my God, this would be perfect for a Pisces season call, um, cow. So... I think that if I do get a chance to do it next year, I think this would be perfect for that. This one also, the next one I'm going to show you is very perfect for that, but I am not sure I'll use it for that. I might use it before next year because it's very soft. It's so pretty. It's not really showing you. Let me see if you can see the real color because it's showing you more bluish on the screen, but this is a very olive blackish green here the screen is not really showing you the right colors for it but i really love this one it's very soft it's uh made in uruguay 
It's 100% merino wool. It's 219 yards in 200 meters. 100 gram in the skein. I think she bought it at a local uh, yarn shop in uh, Washington. So this one, I don't know what I'm going to make with it. I think, uh, yeah, I think this would be nice for some color work, a color work pattern. Let's see. Let's see. We'll see what I do with it. If you have any ideas, let me know um, in the comments below. But I think I, I just had an idea for it. I'll test it out tonight if I have a chance and let you know how it comes out in my stories. If I love it, I'll share it in my stories. How's that? If not, then <laughs> you won't see it anywhere. <laughs> the next one is, I don't know. I don't know. There's no um, tag on this one. So I'm not sure. I feel like it feels like, I feel like it's a wool. I feel like it's, uh, what is this one called? This young Malabrigo. I feel like that's what it is. Because I think I think I've seen this color um, on their website or on their Instagram before, but I really love this color. Seriously, this one I'm in love with it. It's not showing; it's very muted on the screen. It's not really showing you the richness of the colors because each color is very vibrant, but they're not overpowering any each other. So, this one is definitely my favorite of all of them because. Um, I don't know. And I'm thinking, I think I have a thing for orange. Okay, it's this side. We're both orange. But I think I have a thing for orange. I just bought a rug. It's very orange. And it's surprising. Every time I go downstairs in my living room, it's there. It's so bright. I think I have a thing for orange, guys. And I'm painting my living room wall this color. So, yeah. I definitely have a thing for orange. The next one she sent me is, well, she sent me two of that, but different colors. She sent me the Karen Simply Soft, this one, in this color. I'm sure you guys seen this one before everywhere. And then she sent me this color. This color is the Oceana. And this one is Times Square. So, Oceana in Times Square. I'm just laughing because we have a base here. It's a Navy base that's called Oceana. And I don't know. To me, that's funny. <laughs> um, the next one she sent me. Honestly, I don't know. I know it's fingering weight. I don't know what it is, though. I think it's wool. It feels like wool. I'll have to text her and ask her what if she has a tag for this one or if she has any idea what it is. Because there's no tags in it. And again, it's not showing you how pretty it is. I don't know why. Come on. It's not showing you the real colors of it. It's a very in-your-face green. It's not whatever it's showing on the screen. Definitely not that. It's too pretty. It's very pretty. So, um, I don't know. I'm very mad the screen is not showing you guys the color. If I hold it there, will it show you the color? Anyways, it's, it's a very greenish, dark, rich green. It's not the muted color. It's showing it very grayish on the screen for some reason. Um, and it has some very light um, burnt orange-ish, yellow, mustardy yellow in it, which I like. I really like this one as well. I don't know what I would make with it, again, just because it's fingering weight and I don't really work. With fingering weight, I prefer, the lowest I'll go is DK, but I prefer working with um, worsted weight. If you guys see that, most of my patterns are worsted weight. This one, hmm. okay, so it's showing you the colors for this one, but it's, again, it's very muted because the colors are a lot richer. So this one, purple, and it's fingering weight, but I don't know. I don't know what it is. I feel, I think it might be a merino as well, but it's twisted. Like each of the, it's very twisted versus, you know, the regular way yarns are. I don't know. I like this one. I like the way it's very, it's an interesting yarn. I'll have to text her again and ask her what this is so I can do more research about it and let you guys know. Oh, she did send me a third one of the Karen Simply Soft. 
It's this one, this color. And this one is blue camo. So, yep. So the next one she sent me, I remember like a couple of years ago when it first came out, I wanted to try it. But honestly, I never got around to do it just because, again, if you are a maker, a designer, you know that you have so many ideas in your head. But if you don't get to them now, then you'll never get to them. So I put it um, in the back burner while I was uh, working on some other things. But it's this one. This is the Karen Pantone. And the colorway is very pretty. No, that's not the name of it. Uh, what's the name of you? What is your name? I guess it doesn't have a name. Well, it's machine washed, 60% acrylic, 20% nylon, and 20% merino wool. But I have no idea what this color is called. I guess they don't have names for these. But it's all the, it's a fade of blues, I guess. That's what the inspiration for it is. Can you see it? Uh, yeah, that's what the inspiration for it is. I really like this one. I think I'm going to keep it on the top of my stash so I can tr finally try it out and maybe create something with it. Um, I haven't made anything small lately in a while. I don't really like making small things anyway. So that's why I hate, if you guys know me, I think I've said this before, I don't like making like beanies. I know I have a couple, but they're like just so small. I prefer making like something I can wear, some like a cardigan, a sweater or something, a top, something I can actually wear and that's gonna be a, like the main piece, the main event <laughs> of my outfit versus an accessory. Accessories are just so quick for me. But then again, I don't like making blankets because blankets are just too repetitive and they just, yeah, I don't like them. And the last thing she sent me was this Karen cake in this very summery, happy color. They even have an idea of what you can make with it, which is, I like this triangle scarf with it. If I saw this, I wouldn't think it would come out to be like this one. Because this is pretty. So, yeah. I might keep this one and see if I can come out with something that can do the yarn justice. This is a bulky weight. It's called Rainbow Sherbet. And is it bulky weight? Am I lying to you guys? It's 80% acrylic and 20% wool. I'm not sure if it's bulky weight or not. It feels well, it feels bulky to me. It looks bulky, but they're not telling me in a place that I can see if it's bulky or not. So I'm just gonna make my own decision and say it's bulky. How's that? I'm an adult now. <laughs> so yeah, so um that's all the yarns that she sent me. Honestly, she sent me so many, so much yarn. The box was pretty big. Um, I think I'm gonna keep a few of them in my stash for me to create with. Some of them I'm going to be putting up as prizes along with some of the stuff that um, We Crochet sent me for the BIPOC make along. So stay tuned for that. I decided since so many of you guys replied on Instagram and here on YouTube saying that you wanted another BIPOC at the end in the fall, I decided I'm going to do it and I don't know yet how long I'm going to run it for, if it's going to be two months, three months, or just a month. Let me know which one you want. Do you want it to be two months or three months? I think a month is just too short. It's not going to give enough people to the time to start on their projects and everything or finish bigger projects if they want to. I think I'm going to run it for three months. Um, the first year I did it, I did three months, and I think that was a very good time. But let me know in the comments below which one you prefer. Do you want it for two months, three months, or if you have any other suggestions of how long I should run the make along for? The next section normally is um, Fresh Off The Hook. That's a name that one of you guys suggested to me. So Fresh Off The Hook is a name that, let me see, Christina Say, S-E-A-Y. She left a comment and said that um, 
I should choose the name. I should go with the name Hot Off The Hook. So that's the name now for this section. Thank you, Christina, for choosing the name. You know what? Send me a DM. I might send you a little something for choosing the name for me. So Comfortable is done. It's released. It was released last Friday on the 1st, on the 31st of August. Oh, no, of July. 31st of July, it was released. Um, and I have a short videos of me chatting with some of my testers. Not all of them could join, but I have the video talking to, to some of my testers. And I'll also show you guys like some of their makes at the end of it so you guys can see like um, the different versions of it. It's so amazing. And I love how excited they were about the patterns. I love all their different versions. I love like everything because even I learned stuff through my testers. Um, so I'll insert the short clip for you guys before we continue on to the rest of the episode. Welcome guys. Thank you all for testing my pattern. I know I'm just missing two more people. I'm not sure if they're going to be able to join us tonight. I know, um, Elisa is in, uh, Massachusetts and she's having the storm right now. And we're still waiting on Yvonne to see if she can make it today and join us. But go ahead, ladies, tell me about your experience testing this pattern, anything you you liked about it? You did not like about it? I loved uh, testing this particular pattern. I just got into the world of testing like a couple months ago. I did not know it existed at all. Um, and so I was signing up for all these tests and not getting that many. But for this one, I hadn't picked up a Tunisian crochet project in like five years. And I had only ever done like very basic, like a scarf that was like straight and so I was nervous but I love how it was like recipe style and so it's like it's going to perfectly fit your body every time and it also although it was intimidating at first with like like I said the Tunisian pearl stitch which I had no idea what that was and had to YouTube it after you get the hang of it it's so easy and really sort of cathartic in my opinion but I loved it and I love the design yeah, um, I think that's why I included at the beginning of the notes section how through the pearl stitch. I think a video made it easier for you guys. So. <laughs> I can also say that I really, it being the first time I've done Tunisian knitting, crocheting, sorry, it's really been awesome. I've have done normal crocheting and knitting, which I was also taught by my mom. And Tunisian crocheting is just now bitten me. So now I'm just looking for more and more. And also I've been doing testing now for a few months now and absolutely love it. And I love the fact that we can, you know, just help each other in these projects, you mm -hmm. know, getting stuck, there's help, advice. And it's awesome. I love it. <laughs> it is. Um, how long have you been testing for? Um, I would say it's probably about since the beginning of May, so it's not that. Yours is now my fourth project, so it's it's really been awesome doing it. Um, but as I say, yours was the first Tunisian crocheting, the others were normal crocheting. I made a tank top for my daughter also, which she absolutely loves, and then just uh, there were two other projects that I also did, so it's it's awesome. I really enjoy it because you you're learning new techniques and it's it's awesome. The group of ladies is top notch. <laughs> yeah, um, I really love this group of like testers because you guys were awesome, and I know that I've said this before. My schedule is it's 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 nice. It's different. <laughs> <laughs> so um, I love that you guys were able to help each other out. And um, when I first started crocheting, well, not really. When I, I like midway through my crochet journey, that's when I started test testing. And like you said, Karen, you really learn a lot, a lot of techniques, yes. a lot of new things as you're crocheting. Seriously. Um, no, I also started testing earlier this year. Um, this was my fourth one. I've done three other Tunisian tests. And when I found out you selected me, I just got selected for another one. And I was like, I don't know, should I do this? I'm like, it's so cute. I have to, I have to say yes. Um, 
I was so excited about the color work because I'd never done that before with much color work with regular crochet and definitely not with Tunisian. So it's really fun to learn the new technique. And also like it changed as you went. It was really exciting. So, like I just wanted to get to the next section and see how the colors played together. Um, and it's also just nice to have a really supportive group of, of people to go through working a project with. Um, it's usually just kind of on your own. and. But when you get to connect with other people that are super excited about something you want, it's really fun. Yeah. Um, <laughs> honestly, that's why I don't put out any patterns that I'm not. <laughs> don't kill me. I have a surprise visitor. That's why I don't put out any patterns that I'm not um, excited about, just because I want everybody who's just testing it or everybody who's making it to be excited about it. Uh, this, I have one of my patterns up here. This one, this um, beach cover, I made the pattern, but I wasn't excited about it. I'm like, you know what? I'm just not gonna do anything about it. Cause I can't tell people, oh my God, it's so amazing when I'm not feeling it's amazing. Mm -hmm. So yeah. But it's hard to, no. yeah. It's hard to promote um, if you don't like it. So. The last one to go. <laughs> so I've only been test pattern doing test patterns for a few months now. Like Chris said, I actually just realized it was a thing about two months ago and started up doing it um, and have really loved it. And so when I first tried the Tunisian crochet pattern, I was like, I feel like I'm an advanced beginner. I might suck at this. <laughs> so, but the pattern worked up so well and like, also, like she said, it was so nice that it was adjustable to your body because I'm rather large busted. And so what happens a lot of times when they're not customizable is the top ends up being a perfect fit and the bottom ends up being super loose. And so it was nice to adjust it to me. That was really a great thing for me. <laughs> and you were talking about your schedule. I'm so used to like weird schedules because my husband's also military and so I'm like everything's always weird and up in the air and it's not to do the testing I can do it when I want or at my own pace. Do you guys want to show me your top? I know Karen you made yours for your daughter. Does she have it already? Yes unfortunately. <laughs> <laughs> she, you, can, you said she's been wearing it all to work and everything. Yes yes and she's been loving it enjoying it and she just she's actually quite proud of it now she's i've actually gotten her to start knitting now that's it's been an encouragement for her as well so now she wants to learn to crochet but those fingers just don't seem to want to work properly <laughs> i think we're gonna make like 10 of them because this was the perfect project to stash bust we don't need a ton of yarn for like the color work and this, I have so much extra yarn and solid colors, but that don't go with anything else and not enough to make like a sweater. So I feel like I'm gonna end up with like 85. <laughs> <laughs> I've also bought so much yarn. So I've done like, I went a little crazy when I found out that pattern testing was a thing and I, I've done so many, my fingers are gonna fall off, but I'm a little addicted. I have bought so much yarn Oh, during the past three months, I like my boyfriend is about to take my credit card out of my hand, like fry it out of my. And every time he walks in the door, and he's like, "I can tell this is yarn." <laughs> it's like, oh, it's the best. <laughs> it's not a problem because we're making things that are beautiful. So now I'm just selling garments to pay for the yarn. Mm. Okay. So I'm like trying to cancel. I'm not making any money. <laughs> I'm just trying to cancel it out. Do you want to show us your um, your top, Chris? I really like the color. Oh, yeah. Like my cousin loved it because of the pink. Mm -hmm. like, oh my god! Oh. She should make me one. I'm like, no, she's not. Yeah. That is nice. Thank you. I was trying to actually figure out. I was having trouble on the straps, like keeping the edges tight. Mm -hmm. For some reason, that like last loop would loosen up, and so I was having to like pull it really tight. If anybody has any tips, I noticed everybody else's looked perfect, and nobody else had that problem. And I was like, mm -hmm. it's just me. Are you going through both loops when you're going through the edge? 
So when you're doing the edge, I know there's like two, it's kind of look on the side, like two little ones. Can you go through both of them or just one of them? I think you go through one at the end, or is it one at the beginning? I don't remember what I did, honestly. <laughs> But if you're doing your return pass, you should go through two of them to both of them on the side, so that yeah. it's more um, it gives you a straighter edge. Because if you go to one, it's gonna give you that little zigzag look. Okay, maybe that's what it was. I'll have to check when I make the next one. Or <laughs> well, DM me when you make the next one. <laughs> I will. So, Micah, do you want to show us yours? Yes. Get my chat out of the way. Is this purposely Seattle Seahawks colors? No, it was an accident. Multiple <laughs> <laughs> people asked me about it though. So I'm glad I changed out of my pajama shorts that I was wearing earlier for this. So, um, it was actually the I picked out the color just because I wanted the contrast, and then I realized it was the colors of my high school bedroom. I'm like, I guess I'm never gonna change. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but the other thing I loved that we didn't talk about was like the way this decreases is just so beautiful and creates this beautiful edging mm -hmm. along the top and just turns seamlessly into these straps. And I just love that was one of my favorite parts about it was just how pretty the edges are. Yeah. Oh, I love your colors, Laura. Seriously, when I saw yours, I was like, oh my god, this is gorgeous. She has like the bright colors. Because at yeah. first when I saw it, I'm like, is this not going to show this right much? And then you started showing pictures of it. I'm like, oh, yes. Yeah. yeah. I'm all about colors and bright colors. And I actually had this as a stash buster, oddly enough. And so um, I had to go get the coordinating yarns for it. But I had the main color was a stash buster. And I was so excited to use it because I had it there for a while. And I'm like, this is perfect. So is I got it. So it's it's actually an indie, like an indie yarn dyer, mm -hmm. so it it turned out great. Um, so I love that main color. It's yeah, so it, it's called Better Late Than Never, which is perfect for me. <laughs> <laughs> I was happy with that, and then just to get the coordinates, I just wanted the coordinating colors. I wanted something that was really neutral. And I actually had a harder time finding a neutral to go with it, uh, two neutrals. And so it took me like 30 minutes to the yarn store and I finally found them. So, but. No, well, yours, like, I mean, you guys just, you guys amaze me with your color choices and everything. Seriously, now I have like so many ideas. I actually have one that i'm about to start again because i do want to remake the tutorial video that i sent you guys i want to make something that wasn't thrown together in like 30 minutes <laughs> i can do it um and i'm gonna try to make one for my niece and send it to her because she lives in belgium so i'm gonna try to make it as fast as, as possible because i'm sending a package to my sister for her birthday which is next week yeah so <laughs> Yeah. So I need to make it this week, like today, and then send it away so I can make the tutorial using that. So thank you guys so much. I don't want to keep you guys any longer because it's already been half an hour. <laughs> thank you guys so much for testing this. I really loved every single version you guys made. And I really hope that in the future, whenever I have another pattern coming out, I have a few patterns I'm working on and I would love to guys to apply and actually test them. So thank you. And I'll see you guys on Instagram. Thank you, Laura. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> I'll add a video of each of the different versions so you guys can catch them and see them and how they work together. Each of them were just so amazing in their colors and their like the way they matched it. And I just love the group because the group was so vibrant when we were in the chat and they were helping each other. And as you guys know, my schedule can be crazy. So it was just like, it was just amazing. I like that. I do have a lot to share you in this BIPOC section. So I've been making an intentional effort to purchase most a lot of small black owned businesses. And 
that's something I've been doing for years, but lately I've been making it more intentional. Like, and there's a group on um, Facebook called Buy Black National, where I now go and check with them and say, hey, is there anybody in this group that sells a certain product I'm looking for instead of me going to Walmart, going to Target, supporting a large corporation that's really not caring about me. That's putting a lot of chemicals too in the product. So this, I have a lot of things like uh, I went and bought from those small black owned companies. So the first thing is gonna be from Essential Soap by G. That's her business card. She, I bought, um, I bought this natural deodorant from her. It's made with coconut oil, shea butter, jojoba oil, vitamin E, beeswax, a row root powder and essential oil. This scent is lavender. So, and I keep smelling it every time I open it. Like, I don't know what it smells like, but it smells really good. Um, so, and it's made in um, Baltimore, Maryland. So it's right down the street for me. Not really, but you know what I mean? So I bought two, I bought this one and the citrus from her. Um, honestly though, the lavender is my favorite scent. The citrus doesn't smell as strong as the lavender. I like a nice scented one. Um, I'm using deodorant. I don't use antiperspirant. I use deodorant just because antiperspirant has um, aluminum in it and a lot of other things. Um, I try to stay away from that because aluminum just clogs your pore and it keeps you from sweating. Your body is made to sweat. That's what your glands are there for. You're supposed to sweat. Deodorant keeps you from stinking when you're sweating. Antiperspirant keep you from sweating and stinking. You don't want to not sweat. You want to sweat. I want to not stink. I want to smell good. So I buy deodorant. So I've used the citrus so far. Um, it works. Trust me. It's been 90 degrees lately outside in Norfolk. Like, the weather has been straight up disrespectful. The heat is not playing with us. So I've been used, I, I've used this a couple of times when it was 90 degrees just to see because a few times I've bought natural deodorant and once it gets hot, it gets hot, they don't work. You start smelling after you have to reapply it every hour. For this one, I haven't had to reapply it every hour. So I really like this. I'll try the lavender next to see how that works. Um, if it's any different? I don't think so because the ingredients are just the, the same. The only thing that's different is this one has uh, tapioca starch and essential oils and the bitoni, bitonite clay in it. And this one doesn't have those things in it, but I feel like essentially they're the same things. So we'll see. I'll give you guys a review of how they're working out. Again, that's her card. Um, I follow her on Instagram, so you can find her on Instagram as well. The next one is I, I'm going to be honest with you guys. It has been hard for me in the past to purchase from certain black owned businesses just because of customer service. Yes, I do still make an effort to buy from black businesses because they are black businesses, just small businesses, and they need, we need to keep more the money rotating more in the black community because that hasn't been, have that has not been happening. So, but like, especially like my fellow Caribbean people, sometimes when I buy from them, you end up not getting like, if there's a restaurant down the street, it's a Haitian restaurant, Haitian restaurant. It's not Haitian. It's a Caribbean restaurant where I go sometimes. And if you go and buy something, sometimes I'll be like, we don't have it. Like, why is it on your menu if you don't have it, if you never have it? So, and it's like, it's not the fact that they don't have it. It's just the fact that they answer you with an attitude. Like, why are you asking me this? Like, why do you have it? But that's besides the point. Um, despite the customer service, I still make a point to shop there just because they are black owned. They are a small business. I would rather put my money in a small black owned business or a small business period 
it doesn't have to be just black owned. It's just a small business period rather than a large corporation. Um, so, but this one, I'm going to show you guys. I'm saying all this to show you guys this. Her customer service was top notch. Like it was amazing. I'm buying from her again. Like she is, uh, yes. Anytime I run out, I'm going to her. Like I'm, I'm going to run to her before I run out. She's great. So I bought candles from her. It's luxury candle. <laughs> Guys, um, lovevivianrose.com. That's her website. It's in the bottom. The what it's called Vivian Rose. And I just love, first of all, the packaging it came with. It came in. I haven't opened it yet. I have a thing for candles. I'm always burning a candle downstairs or in my room because it's just like so soothing. It's just, it's always sets the mood. Like if I'm cooking, then there's a scent I'll light up. If I'm working out in the living room, then I'll light a candle. If I'm just sitting around typing on my computer, I like have, I always like having a candle like around, but I always make a point to get something that's soy based. Well, I always make a point for it to be soy based because I don't want to have too much um, chemicals in it. But this candle is actually coconut soy base, which I've never had this before. I'm just opening it now with you guys. It actually smells really good. It's called the Tonka Charcoal. It has Tonka, bergamot, and saffron. It smells amazing. It really smells good. And I love, I love this. Like, it's the little things for me, seriously. So... So this one, that's the one I'm going to be burning in my bedroom. Yeah, that's a bedroom smell right there. So I'm going to be burning this one in my bedroom. Uh, this is probably going to last me, let's be honest. This is probably going to last me a month, a month and a half, maybe. Yeah, I'll give myself a month and a half with it. Then I'm going to have to order more. And she also sent this. Um, these are matches. So she sends this with her, like, she does not want you to forget her. It has some matches in there, but I really like the fact that it has her business on there. Can you see this? I really like that. And it says, this candle is about to be lit. <laughs> so, yeah, I like that. And this is why another thing I liked about her. So before I placed this order, I was chatting with her on Facebook and because I asked in the group and then she replied, she sent me the link to her website and everything. And I was like, I really like sandalwood. That's one of my favorite smells when it comes to candles or anything. I don't really like flowery stuff. I don't like rose smell. I don't like, um, I don't know, those flowery smell like you know what I mean? I don't like those. Like none of those girly extra stuff. I like sandalwood. I like woody smells. I like most things that companies market to men are my scent. So, so I was telling her I like the sandalwood. And if she has a candle, that's just sandalwood. She's like, no, she doesn't have one. And I was like, okay, is there anything that you have that's like sandalwood smell. She told me that she has this jasmine and sandalwood body butter. So my thing was it has jasmine in it. And the jasmine is um jasmine is one of my least favorite colors. Uh, my least favorite flowers. I really cannot stand the smell. It just irks me. Um and I didn't want to get the buddy butter, like a big jar of it. I'm like, it's not, the sandalwood is not overpowering the jasmine. So I did not order it. But she sent me um, this anyway. I don't, <laughs> I'm giving it to you like you can smell it. She sent me this one anyways. It's jasmine and sandalwood. It's a triple buddy butter mousse sample. It smells really good. Oh, 
I'll be honest, it smells really good, but the jasmine is overpowering it. Somebody who likes flowery stuff would love this. The fact that I don't like jasmine or flowery scents is the only turn off for me for this scent. I can smell the sandalwood, but the sandalwood is not the primary scent here. That's why this is not my favorite. But I really love the fact that she took the time to send it to me, even though I decided not to order it because I was unsure of what the smell would be. I really like that she took the time to do that, but I don't think this is going to be a keeper. The candle, yes, definitely. 110% the candle is a keeper. This, Jasmine is just not my thing. So if you want, one of you guys want it, send me your address and I'll send it to you. I haven't touched it. I just opened it today and I really don't like the smell. Actually, I think I'll send it to my sister. I don't know if she'll like the smell. I don't think, well, she doesn't like Jasmine either. Well, we'll figure it out. I have more than one sister. The next one, the next one I want to talk about is something. So I went and bought from her because um, Zendra, my friend from who owns Body of Salomon, Zendra is, she just came back from deployment. So I came back from deployment in... March and she came back. Well, I came back at the beginning, the first week of March and she came back the last week of March, I believe, or first week of April. Well, she came back after me, but, um, she has not settled back in yet. A lot of us haven't had the chance to settle back in yet. She still hasn't been home yet. She's in the States, but she's not home yet. Uh, so she hasn't really started making her products again, her hair products and stuff like that again. And I really needed some shampoo, and especially some shampoo that works with my locks. Because I don't want anything that has too much chemicals because with your locks, they tend to stay in there if you don't rinse it well. And yes, you have to take the time and rinse it out. And I did not want something that has a lot of chemicals in there damaging my hair. So I went in the group again and asked for hair product, hair product and shampoo and conditioners. And I bought two of this one. It's the African black shampoo from Vonet Hair Care. Let me give this, pull this here closer. Bought two of this one. And I like how, um, I don't know how to explain it. I like how when I wash my hair with it, you know how something like has peppermint in it and then after that you go outside and the breeze goes through your hair and you just can feel like the freshness and how like happy your hair is. That's the sensation I have after washing my hair with this. And um, I like that. And my hair, and the thing is I love this too. I was using another shampoo again because Zendra wasn't there. She was in deployment. I was in deployment. I bought like a small little shampoo while I was in Bahrain to wash my hair. And the thing that happened is like at the roots, especially you could see like the buildup even after I washed my hair, which was bothering me so much. I was washing my hair almost every day over there just because of that buildup. So and then I came home and I found something that was good. Um, but this definitely, you don't see that. I, I washed my hair once and that was it. That was it. Um, so I would highly, highly recommend her. Vonet Hair Care. Hair Love. That's what it is. This is made with Tamanu Oil. Let me see. It's made with raw African black soap from Ghana. I like that she actually tells you where she sourced it from. And pure olive vera, grapeseed oil, almond oil, Jamaican black castor oil, and a bunch of other things she has in there. And I really, it smells really good because I have the other one that I use. It smells really good and I love it. So I ordered two of this, but hmm. See, this is what I'm saying. I love this. She sent me this as well because it's called, it's a conditioning mask. It's Akumba and Oli, Olivera. Olivera? Olivera? I don't know. So 
it has this in it. I haven't tried it yet. Honestly, I pulled out this, um, I pulled out the shampoos out of the packet and I'm glad I didn't throw the packaging away because I didn't even see this in the bottle. So um, I'm glad I stayed out with until today to pull to check because I kept this one in there and I just didn't check for this. I'm happy for this. So I'll try this and let you guys know how it is. It looks like the, you can see it in the back of it. It looks very soft and like it's going to do a lot of good to my, um, to my hair. So I'm going to definitely give it a try, especially now my hair is looking kind of dry. I don't know if you can see it. And I think that's because again, I need oil and Zendra is not selling. <sighs> I need oil for my hair. So I'm going to do the mask, uh, probably make it as a dip conditioner and see how that goes. Um, and the good thing about this too, I didn't even realize this when I ordered it from her. She's right here in Norfolk. She's in Norfolk, Virginia. Yes. So anytime I want to order, I'm going to get it within like one or two business days. So that is awesome to me. That is even better. So that's it, guys, for all my BIPOC section. I hope you enjoyed. I hope you go visit everybody I've mentioned here and go support them. Go check out their products. They have so much more amazing products. They don't have only what I showed you. Some of them sell candles and hair products and skin products. Some of them sell um, multiple products on their website, T-shirts, backpacks, and stuff like that. So go check them out. Give them some love. And... Please leave in the comment below if you ordered something from them and you love it, let me know. Or if you have another BIPOC business that you would like for me to support, let me know. I'm looking for products, cleaning product for my house. I'm looking to start buying from BIPOC. So I'm looking to buy everything from like a small business. So please definitely send them my way if you know a BIPOC small business that you think I should support. After you guys go and check these companies that I just mentioned and support them if you guys can. Because I know it's a hard time for some of us. Um, if you can, please definitely support a small business. If you can, please definitely support a small black-owned business. So the next section is going to be what's going on in Elizabeth's life. What's going on in my life, guys? Um, I finished the first um, challenge of um, Chloe thing. I lost three pounds in the three in the four weeks that I do it, 28 days. Um, also, I was doing the whole 30. The whole 30 is still going on for two more days. But I finished um, the challenge. I lost three pounds. I don't I think it's more the challenge that made me lose the weight, but sometimes I also think it's more of the whole 30 that made me lose the weight. I think it's more sometimes I think it's more the challenge sometimes just because that when I'm when I'm eating the, that way anyway, I don't lose weight. Like I'll maintain my weight, but I'm not really losing weight. But if since I was doing the challenge and eating right, by eating right I mean cutting out eating popcorn for dinner every night with wine, because that's not a good meal or eating popcorn with beer for dinner because that's not a good meal or eating <laughs> almond for <laughs> dinner. Uh, but um, I cut out the alcohol. I think cutting out the alcohol, cutting out um, the processed food. Honestly, I really don't eat that much processed food anyway. It's not like I'm like craving chips all the time. I think it's cutting out the pasta also that made it um, the three pounds go away, but I'm kind of disappointed just because I feel like, I don't know, I cut out pasta, I cut out anything that has carbs in it, I cut out wine, I let go of wine, and I only lost three pounds, that was my thing with that, period, but it was a good uh, experience, like I said, I was doing it with my sister and my cousin, and I feel like it brought us closer anyway, I, I talk to my sister every day, that my sister in Belgium. I talk to her every day anyway, but in a sense, it brought us closer. And for us, it's the first time we actually started a challenge, a workout challenge and finished it. And like we were saying, we think it's because of the support and like the fact that we were always talking to each other. We were always on the phone with each other. And some days where I wasn't feeling so great about it, we would 
they still do it because I know that they were there counting on me to do it. Or I know that they would call me like constantly if I don't show up to the hour little WhatsApp meeting for it. So I, I really enjoy that. I really enjoyed having somebody there to talk about how I'm feeling, not just about the workout, but after the workout or in my day to day or to see the progress too. Cause like it's little things like running up the stairs, like before me running up the stairs, I'll be up the stairs, like dying on the floor. Now I run up the stairs. I'm like, Oh, this is nothing. I own these stairs. Well, I kind of do own the stairs, but <laughs> you know what I mean? So, um, that is, that's, that's how it's been great. So we decided to do a second challenge this time around. We're doing the 21 days get fit challenge. And this one is using a lot more um, this one is using weights, which I like. Um, I'm not really a cardio person. I like to use weights better because I feel like my body responds to it better when I use, um, when I lift weights. So we're doing this one. I'm enjoying it so far. It's a 21 day. So, um, today is day seven. No, today is day six. Tomorrow is day seven of our challenge. So, so far, so good. I'm hoping to see a um, better result in my body measurement, not so much as my weight, because honestly, I don't really care for the weight changing on the scale. I just want to see the change in my body physically, because I know like sometimes when you gain muscle, your body is still going to either stay the same weight or you're going to feel, you're going to look, the scale is going to show a higher number. So, um, I'm not really worried about that. That's why I took my body measurement so I can see the real change in my body. And honestly, I feel like my clothes are fitting better. Because hey, I think it's the 28 days plus the fact that we continued on with a new challenge right after. My clothes are fitting better. I am feeling better. Like like I said, running up the stairs is not a challenge anymore. Um, if I go for long, like four miles walks, um, those are a lot better on my knees, on my body. Um, I don't think I'm overweight like crazy, um, but I'm definitely overweight by military standard. I'm definitely overweight by my own standards in some ways. Like, I don't think I'm overweight. In fact, that I'm not, you know, I'm not, um, I don't get tired walking to the mailbox. Like, I still fit in the clothes I was fitting in two years ago. However, I'm fitting in them differently. So um, that's my problem. That's my only problem with my body. I want my body to be more shapely, get back to the shape it had before versus the shape it has now. So that's the only things I want to change. I want to see differently. Um, I'm not really worrying about losing 30 pounds. Well, I am worrying about losing 30 pounds, but I want to lose 30 pounds and gain 30 pounds of muscles. That would be awesome. I don't want to just lose 30 pounds and look like a cardboard. I want to get toned. So anyway, this is not a podcast about me and my body issues. So we're going to move on from that. It was a pleasure, guys, having you here for this third episode of Design More Design. I can't believe I'm already on my third episode. Next episode is going to be coming out on the 24th of this month. So stay tuned for that. I'm going to have a guest with me, and she's going to be talking about dying, like yarn dying. Um, I'm not going to say who it is yet, but if you think you know who it is, just leave the name in the comment below. I'm going to say this. I used one of her yarn for one of my patterns before, and that pattern was, was released this year. I haven't released that many patterns this year, so that should be very easy for you guys to find. So go ahead, check my Instagram out see if you, to see if you can guess who it is, and leave a comment below and let me know. All right? Thank you, guys. I'll see you guys in two weeks with episode four. Bye.